it is of interest to know about decision analysis, especially when we talk about decision under uncertainty. At the end of this lesson, learners should be able to one divine decision under uncertainty. Two itemize five criteria for decision analysis under uncertainty. Three analyze decision situation under uncertainty using the five criteria. I'm operation research facilitator Abdullah Okwemi Falade. Decision making under certainty. We want to move from certainty to uncertainty. When do we said we have certainty? When do we said the decision making is certain? In this situation, you only have only one state of nature, only one for each decision alternatives. Another point, the decision maker has a perfect knowledge about the future outcomes. He simply chooses the alternative with the optimum payoff. Now let's talk about the uncertainty. When the decision is uncertain, you have more than one state of nature for each of the decision alternatives. And you lack the knowledge about the probabilities of their occurrence. Much of the business decision takes place under conditions of, of uncertainty. So most time we trash out, we try to tackle uncertainties in business. It is assumed that the true state of nature belongs to the set of all states in that decision environment. And so the process does not make use of the probability estimates on those states. So you understand better what do we mean by this probability estimate in the next video where we shall be talking about decision making under risk. We have the five criteria for decision under uncertainty. We have the maximax, also known as optimistic. We have the maximum, also known as pessimistic. We have the minimax regret, or wish, and Laplace. If you are watching this video for the first time, do not forget to like, subscribe, and press the notification bell so that you enjoy more videos and learn more. Let's look at each of these criteria using an example. Example, payoff table below represents the amount gained from three strategies and conditions. Here's a given payoff table and it's a typical example of decision making under uncertainty because it has more than one state of nature for each decision alternative. For each decision alternative, decision alternative D1, it has S1, S2, S3 and S4. So it has more than one state of nature. The same thing for D2 and D3. Max, max or optimistic criterion. In this criterion, the decision maker finds a maximum payoff for each alternative and then chooses the alternative with the maximum payoff within the group of the maximum. Maximax criterion continued. From our example, we try to look for the maximum in each of these row. The maximum in the first row out of 4,000 minus 100, 6,000 and 18,000 is 18. For D2 is 20,000, for D3 is 20,000. By the definition, maximum of the maximum payoff across the rule. So the maximum of all our maximum value that's, that has been extracted, the maximum of all this, the maximum of 18, 20, and 18,000, 20,000, 20,000 is 20,000. 
So, by Maxima's criterion, we recommend that the decision maker should either go for D1 or D2 because the 20,000, which is the Maximax value, lies under the decision alternative D2 and D3. Once again, after you have calculated the maximum across the row, you now choose the maximum of all these values, which is 20. You go back to the given table where you have 20. Where will you have 20? You have 20 other spots. D1 intercepts S1. D3 intercepts S1. So you have our interest is on the decision alternative. So we recommend that the decision maker should go for D2 or D3 because that's the places where we have that value 20,000, 20,000. For maximum criteria, as the name implies, maximum of the minimum value minimum payoff across the rule so the decision maker finds the minimum possible payoff of each alternative and then chooses the alternative with the maximum payoff within the group of the minimum maximum of minimum payoff across the rule so the maximum of the minimum across the rule the maximum of minus 100 is 0 and minus 2000 is 0 so you go back to the original table, where do you have zero? It falls under decision alternative D2. So by the maximum criterion, you recommend that the decision maker should adopt decision alternative D2. The next one, minimax regret criterion. This is a very sensitive criterion. Listen attentively. In this criterion, we are trying to minimize the regret. We are trying to do what? We want to minimize the regret prior to the selection of a particular alternative. And how do we achieve that? The first thing, you identify the highest value in each column. You subtract every value in each column from its respective highest value to obtain the regret. The third thing is for each decision alternative, obtain the maximum regret. Fourth, find the minimum of this maximum regret to obtain the minimax regret value. And lastly, identify the decision alternative corresponding to the minimax regret as the optimum decision. Look at this table. We have chosen the maximum under each column, which is 20,000 for S1. That's why we have 20,000 minus 4,000, 20,000 minus 20,000, 20,000 minus 20,000. For the second column, the highest value is 15,000. 15,000 minus minus 100. 15,000 minus 5,000. 15,000 minus 15,000. For the third one, the highest value is 600. 600 minus 600. 600 minus 400. 600 minus open bracket minus 2,000. For the fourth column, we have 18,000 as the highest value. 18,000 minus 18,000. 18,000 minus 0. 18,000 minus 1,000. And that gives birth to this regret table. By the definition of minimax, the minimum of the maximum payoff. So what's the maximum payoff? So we extract the maximum payoff from the regret table. 16,000, 18,000, 17,000. What is the minimum of the three? That's 16,000. By that, we recommend D1, where we have 16,000. So by the minimax criterion, we recommend that the decision maker should adopt decision alternative D1. All which criterion? This criterion requires the use of formula weighted average payoff. All which criterion is a criterion of realism. It is also called weighted average criterion because of the nature of its determination. 
It's a compromise between the maximax and the minimax decision criteria. And the criterion is based on the index of optimism or coefficient of optimism denoted by alpha. And your alpha lies between a zero and one strictly. How do we apply all which criteria? You need the formula weighted payoff, which is you need to master the formula which is equal to the alpha maximum payoff plus one minus alpha minimum payoff. So you'll be given the alpha value. In this example, we have chosen our alpha to be minus we have chosen alpha to be 0 0.3. Don't forget alpha value lies between a zero and one. So you'll be given your alpha value, which is the coefficient of realism. We look at the maximum value in each row and the minimum value in each row. We impute into the formula. Weighted payoff is equal to alpha, open bracket, maximum payoff plus one minus alpha, minimum payoff. For the weighted payoff for D1, alpha which is 0 0.3 multiply by what is the maximum payoff in d1 18,000 plus 1 minus 0 0.3 multiply by minimum minus 100 when you punch your calculator you get 5,330 for d2 you get 6,000 when you impute the figure correctly and for d3 you get 4,600 now, the conclusion is we recommend that the decision maker should adopt decision D2 since it is the decision alternative with the highest weighted payoff. So you consider the weighted payoff. You consider the decision alternative with the highest weighted payoff. After calculating the weighted payoff, you look at the, which decision alternative generated the highest weighted payoff and that decision alternative should be recommended. The last criterion is Laplace. Laplace criterion. Though we don't need at Laplace criterion, this criterion is based on what is known as principle of insufficient reason. So Laplace criterion is known as principle of insufficient reason. So the criterion assign equal probability to all the events of each alternative and select the alternative associated with the maximum expected payoff. And it should be noted that when there are n states, the probability assigned to each state is 1 over n. And this helps us to generate this formula. So I generated this formula from this understanding. So expect a payoff will be 1 over n open bracket sum of the row value that is the value of the alternative and n is the number of states of nature you have so we need to calculate the expected payoff for each of this row so expected payoff is given as 1 over n sum of the rows value so for the expected payoff d1 Expected payoff for D1, that's 1 over 4, because we have 4 states of nature. 1, 2, 3, 4. Open the bracket. Under D1, you sum everything. 400 plus 1, minus 100, plus 600, plus 18,000. And when you punch your calculator, you get 5,625. The same thing goes for D2. The expected payoff for D2, 6,350. And for D3, 8,500. And by the virtue of this, by the virtue of the Laplace criterion, we recommend that the decision maker should adopt decision alternative D3 since it is a decision alternative with the highest expected payoff. Take note for the Awish and the Laplace. After your computation, you choose the decision alternative with the highest value. Highest weighted average payoff if you are dealing with Owish, highest expected payoff when you are dealing with Laplace. I hope you've learned one or two things in this video. You have some practice questions.
Dash is known as Savage Criterion. Dash Criterion requires the decision maker to find a maximum payoff for each alternative. Another name for maximum is Dash. Value function can also be rewritten as Dash. Dash criteria require the decision maker to try to minimize the regret prior to the selection. And so we have some other questions like that. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.